Hey everyone, today we are going to solve the lead code question maximum subarray, and it seems like a very famous um, problem, so we should solve it. Um, so you are given integer array nums, and find the subarray with the largest sum and the return its sum. So let's see the example. So you are given uh, this input array, so minus 2, 1, minus 3, 4, minus 1, 2, 1, minus 5, and 4. And the output is 6 because um, this part is a uh, largest sum in the array so that's why we should return six so uh, by the way so what is a subarray so subarray is uh, like a contiguous part of array so you cannot add number from a non-adjacent part of array like this like a one plus four yeah so let me explain how to solve this question before I start my explanation so let me introduce my channel so I create uh, a lot of videos to prepare for technical interviews I explain all the details of all questions in the video, and you can get a code from GitHub for free. So please subscribe my channel, hit the like button, or leave a comment. Thank you for your support. Okay, so let me explain with this example. So I copy from this uh, input array from uh, example one. So a tricky point of this question is that uh, we have a negative number. So if all numbers are positive, uh, in that case, we just add all numbers and just return. But uh, we have uh, like a minus two, minus three, minus one, minus five. So there is a zero um, negative number in the input array. And uh, to solve this question, I use two variables, like a total and a result variable. And the total is a current total, and the result variable is a return value. And the total uh, variable is initialized with zero. And the result variable uh, is initialized with a first value, in this case, minus two. And uh, basically, I iterate through all numbers like one by one. And uh, every time um, you know, when we find a new number, uh, we just add the number to total variable and then uh, compare total versus uh, result. Then if total is greater than a result variable, then update a result variable with a total. So let's begin. Um, first of all, we find minus two. And uh, now total is zero and just update uh, uh, minus two. And then compare two numbers, uh, total versus result variable, and they are same, so I don't update result variable. And then next, um, we find a uh, one, and uh, in that case, uh, we add uh, plus one to total, but before that, um, look at the current total number, so minus two, if current total number is negative, then uh, reset the total number to zero before adding a current number because um, look at the first two numbers. So if we add plus one to uh, minus two, uh, total should be minus one, right? But it's obvious in the first two numbers, um, uh, the largest sum should be one. So if um, minus two uh, updated with zero, so zero plus and the other current number one, so we can get uh, like a correct uh, largest sum. Yeah, right. So that's why um, uh, every time before we adding the uh, new number, um, if total number is negative, just uh, reset the total number to zero so that we can get the correct uh, largest sum. So in this case, um, so um, current total uh, was like a minus two, and then reset the total to zero, and then add plus one. And then compare two number, one versus negative two, and one is greater than minus two. So that's why um, update result variable with one. And then move next, we find uh, minus three, now current total is one, so just add minus three to um, total, that should be minus two. And then compare minus two and one, so one is greater than minus two, so I don't update the result variable. And then move next, uh, we are now four. And uh, now, um, same thing, uh, total number is uh, minus two. So we should reset total number to zero, and then add plus four to total, so now total is 4. And then compare um, 
four versus one, and the four is a greater than one. So update result variable with four. And then move next, minus, we find minus one. And now current total is a positive. So just add minus one to total and three. And I compare three versus four. And uh, in this case, four is a greater than three. So I don't update the result variable. And then move next, and we find two. So current total is positive. So just add two to total, so total five. And uh, five is greater than four. In that case, update result variable to five. And then move next, we find one. So now total is positive. So just add one, six. And I compare two numbers, and the six is greater than five. So update result variable with six. Then uh, we find a, a minus five. So current total is positive. So just add a minus five to total. So that should be one. And the one is uh, um, less than six. So I don't update result variable. And then uh, next we find four. So current total is positive. So I just add a, a current number to total. That should be five. And then compare two number five versus six. And the six is greater than five. So I don't update the result variable. And then finally, um, we reach end of input array. And then uh, we get a six. So that's why we should return six in this case. Um, I think at this part. Yeah, so that is a basic idea to solve this question. With that being said, let's get into the code. Okay, so let's write the code. Once you understand the concept of my solution, Coding is not difficult. So first of all, uh, initialize result variable with the first number, uh, nums zero, and the uh, total equals zero. And uh, sorry, uh, I forgot to explain why we need to initialize with the first value. So the reason is like uh, imagine uh, if you get the, like uh, um, only minus two as an input array. So if if I um, initialize a result variable with zero, in that case, uh, this program uh, will return like a zero. But uh, actually, uh, in this case, we should return negative two. So initialized with zero actually uh, doesn't work. So that's why we, sh uh, we should um, initialize with a first value. So that's why uh, num is zero. And then um, start looping, so for n in nums. And then, um, as I explained earlier, um, so basically total plus equal n. And then every time uh, compare um, the two number, and one is a current result value, and then the other is a current total value. But before that, oops, uh, if total is less than zero, in that case, uh, we should reset total variable to zero, equals zero. Yeah, actually, that's it. After that, just return result variable. Yeah, so let me submit it. Yeah, looks good. And the time complexity of this solution should be order of n, because uh, we iterate through all numbers like one by one here. And the space complexity is uh, O1. I think uh, we use uh, two variables, not extra like a data structure or something. So I think uh, uh, space complexity should be O1. So that's all I have for you today. So if you like it, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, or leave a comment. I'll see you in the next question.